Welcome to this interview. My name is Philipp Petermeyer and I'm part of the European Industrial Doctorate program Interfaces. And today I have the chance to talk to Emil Bistrom about applied aspects of biotechnology and project development in this field. So thank you for being with us today. Thank you. Uh, my first question would be a very fundamental one. How do you use sustainability and whatever it implies to grow your company? I mean, sustainability is everything nowadays and the UN 17 goals is more or less the fundamental that we have to adjust to in chemical industry, biotechnology and everything. So for us, it's a, a really good driver to get a new business and to get the opportunity to actually be part of this uh, new sustainable uh, world that I'm looking forward to. And I suppose this is also um, one of the reasons maybe why you are part of Interfaces. Um, or I'm laying words in your mouth, so... No, no, it's exactly this. I mean, it's always interesting to to look into new uh, ways of producing necessary chemicals or plastics or w w whatever that we need to replace the old way, old-fashioned way. So I'm, I'm really happy to be part of this type of projects and, uh, and finding new ways to a more sustainable future. Um, a very basic question about um, how you and your company operate. So how do you typically first start a project and then further develop upon it? Is there any um, typical pathway that you follow? Uh, we have a few different frameworks that we're working with, uh, like the lean startup and the minimum viable product, uh, which is very essential in terms of uh, product development, uh, which uh, in a very short way, I mean, you develop a product or a prototype and you directly uh, engage with the customers to get feedback and you do iterations over and over again to uh, improve the, the, the product. Uh, in, in terms of projects in general, we try to only start projects which are already 80% finished. That's our new sort of way of working. And we use a concept called uh, a second brain uh, within the company. And uh, the, yeah, it, it's fun to look into new type of frameworks and way of working and uh, step aside from those traditional, uh, maybe too time consuming routes. So mm -hmm. I will see how it works out. And what do you mean when you say that you only um, try to start projects that are already 80% finished? Do you mean that you um, step in at the stage where already a lot of development have been done or just into projects where um, the capabilities that you and your coal company Spincam can provide are already um, basically making up 80% of the solution that the customer is looking for? Yeah, I mean, it's 80% of what we could contribute with, uh, which means that we have a large database of knowledge uh, when it comes to how the rotating bed reactor works, right. uh, in what type of uh, fields it could be deployed, everything from nuclear industry, pharma, cosmetics, food, uh, and so on and so on, and uh, even uh, wastewater treatment and all these type of knowledges from different industries helps us a lot when we should design new concepts or new process routes in uh, whatever industry that we are involved in. All right. Um, when you think about the industries that you are involved in, how do you mostly acquire new potential customers? And what are the main challenges to get uh, visible? Uh, right now, our website is the, the, the key source of uh, incoming leads uh, mm. um, sales terms and uh, uh, i mean it's much better if the customer finds us and that we can educate the customer 
to find the right solution. I mean, today, if you should buy a phone, you probably browse internet, uh, you compare different technical features uh, and so on. And we would like to be the, the resource for uh, process technologies and so on that uh, our customer can get and educate themselves before they make a, a decision to contact us. And then we know that if they contact us, it's a very great likelihood that they will become a customer. And then we can start a journey together in doing the process development and uh, deploy the technology in, in full scale eventually. On this topic on the technology, I want to move on to my technical questions now. Um, the first one would be the core technology of SpinCam is the rotating bed director. So maybe you could get, give us a short um, explanation of how it works and what it does. It's essentially a confinement where you can uh, keep a solid face. Uh, and our intention is always to how can we create a flow of a liquid to get in contact with this solid. This solid could be an adsorbent if we would like to remove something. It could be a catalyst if we would like something in the liquid to react on a surface, like with immobilized enzymes or metal catalysts. Or it could be other type of solids to remove water from a reaction or, or so. So when you're spinning this uh, basket, uh, the cylindrical confinement where you have your solid face, you will throw out the liquid inside and you will suck new liquid in from bottom and from top, passing this packed bed that you have in the cylinder. So it makes it an efficient way of uh, getting the liquid in contact with the solid, which sort of is the basic level of what we are actually doing. And then it's tons of other parameters, of course, that affect the overall process efficiency and so on. But Thank you for the explanation. Um, second question is, in the development of which processes is spinning can typically involved when you have a project of a customer? Is it only the reactor itself? Or is it, um, goes it, does it go up, um, further than that? Could be essentially whatever. Uh, in the ideal case, the customer contact us on a very early stage. And uh, we could be uh, doing some tests in our lab. It could be screening for 10 different enzymes, find the best enzyme that they could use in a, a reaction. Then we could be part of the process development, taking it into pilot scale and uh, eventually designing the whole uh, process uh, in uh, full scale uh, production. Th that's sort of the ideal route. Sometimes they the just pick one of these package, uh, sometimes all of them. And uh, I should say it's very individual from project to project. I see. And when you are involved in, in uh, um, at mo more different steps in the, in the overall process, um, is there any, I say, recurring pattern of more difficult process um, units that are um, more cumbersome to optimize than others? No, I mean, uh, uh, the funny thing is that the rotating bed reactor will more or less always work. Uh, so that's a, a good start. Uh, mm. And then it's up to sort of the, the chemistry and uh, quite often it, I mean, finding the right immobilization technique for the enzyme onto the solid support might have a great effect. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're using commercial availables, you, you just screen for sort of within the black box. It seems to be a lot of unknowns and difficult to explain why one preparation works better than the other uh, but in, in general a few different runs with different rpm uh, a few different temperatures and uh, more or less than then you're ready to go to, to get a decent result all right and when you are screening for um these optimal reaction conditions um or any conditions that the RBR is used in, um, do you rely mainly on um, offline analytics, or you, do you do you or Spring can also have experience with inland analytics, and 
if so, are they always at, always advantageous or also maybe sometimes overcoupling, complicating any task? I mean, uh, the best thing is always to do things as simple as possible. The, that's coming back to the product development and minimum viable product. Uh, I think in general or quite often, uh, especially in academia, it's a little bit of over complication. Uh, but in, in process industry, you have to have online analytics in, in many situations. And uh, typically we use uh, pH probes, measuring conductivity and temperature and so on to follow our reaction. Uh, our customers are using more sophisticated techniques with near infrared probes or other type of online anal analytics, which is a, a great advantage of the rotate embed reactor since it uh, removes a lot of interferences uh, caused by uh, grinded uh, beads in the reaction or the solid phase swirling around or, or so. Now we keep the solid phase contained and we have a clear solution that we could easily do measurements in. And we also have examples where you do an automated sampling and taking uh, a sample out of the vessel and then run HPLC or um, some people not connected to the RBR, but is even running uh, online uh, NMR uh, to uh, follow our reaction. So it's a lot of opportunities with online analytics. And I think it saves a lot of time if you can run a reaction and you stop it when it's finished and not run the reaction for eight hours or 24 hours like the standard protocols always states all right thank you for this very interesting insights and with this i want to come to my last question so um what kind of opportunities do you see for the upcoming next generations that um consider going into the field of biotechnology tremendous i mean everything is changing now we we need new sources of energy, new type of foods, and uh, a lot of these are related to biotechnology. And those type of techniques could be used in several different fields. So getting an education in that field is, uh, I mean, you can't be without a job, uh, essentially. <laughs> that sounds very good. Um, thank you for your insights and for your time today. And with this, um, I want to wrap up this interview. Thank you for, um, for watching. Thank you. Mm -hmm.